Here with Jack Shore, UFC 286, and uh, featherweight Jack Shore. How's, uh, how's, how's, how different does it feel coming in as a featherweight? Yeah, it feels good. Fight, fight week's a lot more enjoyable. Um, <clears throat> I don't, uh, you know, it, I'm still going to be cutting a little bit, and, and you know, I don't want to go in too light because I still want to put on a bit of size to obviously go back in the cage, but it's been a much more enjoyable fight week. It's, it's less stress. You know, everything's under control, and, um, yeah, I'm just feeling a lot better than myself, and, and the camp's been a hell of a lot better as well. I mean, people who don't go through that process themselves, I mean, what can you really tell them? Like on a on typical Wednesday coming in fight week, what is going through your body and your mind when you're cutting all that weight? <laughs> it's uh, a lot of cravings. And to be honest, it's, you know, everything's an effort. It's like go, going back two or three fights, the last two or three, everything's a massive effort. Just, you know, putting on a face for the media, like kind of dragging yourself through the training sessions. Um, you know, I, I trained three times Monday, twice yesterday. I'll, I'll be able to train twice today. It's just, it's kind of like, it doesn't make sense when you think about it to train as hard as you do for a fight and then all a fight week just spend your body feeling terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to be able to continue peaking this week to the fact where, you know, I can cut it down a little bit tomorrow, get my weight in done and then fill back up and, and, and you know, not be a million miles from where I was on Monday. Yeah, yeah. So when, when we hear a guy like John Jones who's fighting heavyweight say, <laughs> I still like to suffer a little bit before that, that that's, that's, I don't that's know all if fake. I, huh? I don't know if I believe him. He's living the dream up at that. Uh, what he weighed two, 250 pounds there's, there's no way he's doing any suffering in fight week yeah what was your approach um coming in like like you said you wanted to add a little bit of size did you feel like like hey i need to bulk up a little bit or is it more just about like hey i don't need, have to cut as much it, it was kind of in, in between you know I, i've known that i wanted to move up since around about august time so i wanted to do it properly i didn't just want to be like you said just think oh well it's a case of not cutting weight i wanted to make sure i was you know well suited for the weight class you know i was a big guy for 35 anyway but i just wanted to put on a little bit of lean muscle a little bit of size so that you know when i'm going up against these these bigger stronger guys to what i have been going up against so like i can hold my own and um i feel like we did a good job of that before christmas just just putting on the size and then obviously just just pulling it back a little bit now for the last eight weeks and um yeah it's, it's been a case of I've I've been able to properly fill my training camp. You know, I haven't been having to run like a marathon runner every day as well as doing my sparring and my pad work and my S and C. You know, my entire nutrition has been based around skill work, sparring, technical work and um I'm feeling a hell of a lot sharper going into it and a hell of a lot more energized. Was it tough walking away? it's hard to get a number next to your name, right? And you <laughs> yeah. got a number at, at Bantamweight. Is it was that difficult to be like or do you feel like you're kinda of carrying that number over to a new weight class? No, it was a little bit tough because I, I worked so hard and, and pushed so long to kind of get there. And I, I didn't have an easy route to it, you know, between pullouts and, you know, tough fights. I did work hard to get that ranking. Um, but like I keep saying, it's easy to kind of forget about a tough weight cut when you're winning all the time. And then, you know, when, when you pick up a loss, you kind of think, right, well, what could be done differently? And, um, you know, I, I, it is what it is at the end of the day. When you've got a scientist and doctors telling you, like, you need to make this move up or you're going to seriously affect your health, you know, some, something drastic might happen, you know, what, I don't mind if something happens in the cage, I know what I signed up for, but last thing I want to do is damage myself or, or something drastic happen in a sauna or in a bath beforehand, just in order to get to the, to the fight, sure. so as, as gutted as I am to walk away from the ranking, it is what it is, I, my, my health's more important, and, you know, the same thing applies, I want to be pushing to those rankings in this weight class, I know I'm going to start at the bottom of the pile, work my way up, but, it is what it is, you know, it's, it's, it's for the better. And I think it'll, it's for my longevity. I, I can have a much longer, healthier career at this weight. For sure. And I don't think, um, I don't think Sean Shelby will forget the work that you did at 135. I mean, you, you, you look at this fight with Mocklin, and then kind of where do you think that you'll be inserted sort of into this, this new, new weight class? I think I'll be towards, you know, if I get a good win and, and look good doing it towards the upper echelon. I, I mean, I'm not sure I'll be straight in against a ranked guy, but I think, you know, your guys were just sitting just outside that ranking where, you know, your, your high level guys then were, were either just outside or just on their way to possibly being ranked. I think I'd slot in there nicely. Uh, Mark one has been in there with some good level guys, Arnold Allen, Burgos, Lerone Murphy, Jonathan Pierce, who's now fighting yep. Bryce Mitchell. So, you know, a good win over him, I think it puts me in a good spot. Obviously, I know he lost his last one, but... He's a dangerous guy, so if I can go out there and look good against him, then I think they'll they'll know that I can do it this weight class. What I did at bantamweight as well. You feel like um, you feel like this is a like a sort of an exposure type week for you. I mean, obviously here, here being in London and big card, obviously Leon Leon headlining. You feel like this is uh, I mean every fight take it as the most important thing but do you feel like like this could draw some eyeballs this would be like a big step yeah a million percent it's massive this week you know the the media presence that j just the amount of like i just noticed it through social media and the interactions and stuff on there this it doesn't feel like your average ufc london you know the fact that it's a pay-per-view 
you've got the, the two best welterweights in the world fighting. Um, Leon's the biggest British star. You've got Usman, the former pound for pound number one. There's obviously going to be a lot more eyes. You know what I mean? You've got... It's a pay-per-view event. You know, it's my first pay-per-view event. I've always fought on fight nights and I can feel the difference mm. in, in everything or everything feels 10 times bigger. So it's a great opportunity for me. Um, it's, it's a privilege to be part of this card. And it just means I look good on Saturday night. There's going to be 10 times more people watching it than, than what they would have been maybe on a fight night. Do you feel any of that in terms of, because um, I've seen you say, you know, and I've heard other undefeated fighters say this, you know, that once you, you suffer the loss, it's almost like a, a, a nice thing because it takes away like, okay, well, now it's happened, you know. But at the same time, you never want to lose two in a row, of course, and you're no. coming off of a loss. So are you, are you feeling any different coming into to this week, coming off a loss? I feel a lot more relaxed, to be honest. I feel like I can go into this fight and kind of fight the opponent performance rather than, I just feel like sometimes when you're undefeated and that's all anyone ever wants to talk about is, oh, do you feel the pressure? You're on this streak. You kind of like, you're fighting not to lose sometimes rather than fighting to go out there and, and put on a show and win. And, um, you know, my entire career before the UFC, I never worried about being undefeated. I just wanted to go in there, put on a show, didn't want to go to the distance, wanted to get the finish and, and come out and have people talking about me, you know, saying, oh, th this guy's legit. And <clears throat> I feel like I'm back there again now. I feel like, you know, that monkey's off my back. I haven't got to worry about uh, if you lose this one, everyone's going to be worried about you not being undefeated. Um, you know, I've, I've experienced it now. I know how it feels. And I've been in martial arts 20 years. You know what I mean, I know what it's like to lose before I even step foot in a cage. So it's all life lessons. And I just feel so much more relaxed going into this fight. I just feel like I can go out there and, and turn up and just, just fight to the best I know I can and do the stuff I'm doing in the gym. That's, that's why I felt like a bantamweight... I was a shadow of what I was doing in the gym, whereas I genuinely believe this fight, I can go in there and perform how I'm performing, you know, behind closed doors as well. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.